it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the audio system demo of the 2021 Ram 1500 and it's a 19 speaker, 900 watt audio system. This is gonna be an end up for me. We're gonna take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio inputs, controls, speaker locations, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demonstrations, get out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling. I'll give you my thoughts at the end. If you don't care about any of the static stuff, you just wanna hear the tunes, check the chapters in the video, you can skip right on ahead to when we're listening to music out on the road. Before we get started, let's hop out, take a look at it. This is actually the TRX, the Rebel TRX, the top performance dog in the truck universe. Got it absolutely filthy here. That 6.2 liter supercharged engine tucked underneath. As you can see, we've had a whole bunch of fun. So if you want to see more of that, check the links in the description. We even did a mini highway fuel economy test on this thing. It did not do great, as you would expect. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed WAV audio files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system. High quality binaural both microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to the factory defaults. Let's take a look at those now. We got the very large Uconnect touchscreen here. Now right off the bat, I actually prefer the smaller Uconnect screen. I don't find any benefit in this larger format. It's a little bit laggier. It, it makes the climate controls more difficult to use. I've spent a lot of time with both the smaller screen and the larger screen, and I prefer the smaller one. Either way, this one's still very responsive, looks good. So let's head into, whoops, could have gotten to it even quicker there, but let's head into audio settings now. You have your standard front rear, left, right, fader, and balance. You also have bass, mid-range, and treble on the equalizer, speed adjusted volume, and a surround sound option. So we're gonna toggle the surround sound on and off and also go through the equalizer now. Audio controls, you've got a nice, easy to grab volume knob right here. It's very symmetrical with the system. The clicks are a little soft, but still works nicely, and you could grab it with gloves or anything like that. You've also got on the right hand of the steering wheel behind volume uh, buttons. For track selection, if you're on the main audio screen, you can use the touch screen. You can also rotate this knob to shift around the screen and switch tracks like that, depending on which screen you're on. And then on the left side of the steering wheel, you've got track selection buttons on there. For audio inputs, you have your standard AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, USB-A and USB-C. Quick side note, look at how many there are. We've got two A's and two C's right up front and it allows data connections with all of them. So right now I've got my iPhone plugged in, I've got my Android phone plugged in, and I've got the USB stick for the tracks plugged in. If you watch these tracks reg or these videos regularly, you know I often have to remove the USB drive to do the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demos. Not today. You've also got a USB-A in there. You have more in here. You have a number wall style outlet in there, so that's cool. And then you got more in the back as well. So tons of power and data points. And on top of that, you also have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support, as I mentioned, and a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack right in there. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, you don't have a disc player, but outside of that, just about every sort of input you could want. Speaker locations, as I said, this is a 19 speaker system. A lot of the speaker grills are doubled up in what Harman Kardon calls Unity speakers. So we'll go through and show you those now. Starting down here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in the doors, 15, 16, 17, 18 in the ceiling, and a subwoofer behind the seats, 19. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demonstrations. So like I mentioned, everything's already plugged in. I can just go home. You see right here on the home screen, top half, you've got your Android Auto. It looks nice. Go to the home menu there, scroll through. Settings screen, YouTube music, all very easy. And you still get this lower section, so you can have your data playing down there. Or you could go, what else could you do? Apps maybe? That's gonna go full screen. Um, 
can you do? You can do these controls. That takes up half the screen, so you can see it and that sort of deal. Find it, maybe? No, nope, that's another full screen. So, if it's got to do so many full screen things, what's the point of having the large screen? Can you do nav part screen, maybe? I'm sure you could play around with it and reorganize some things. Anyway, to switch to CarPlay, we're going to go... I'll just unplug the Android device. Look at that, CarPlay comes right up. It was neat actually, I didn't have to do anything to make CarPlay work when I first plugged it in. I just inserted the device and right away CarPlay just popped up on top. So I thought that was nifty. Again, looks good. Move the map around here. Pinch to zoom, not really happening. I guess, I don't know if that's a CarPlay thing or not, but not really pinching to zoom, but you got your media, settings, all of that works very nicely, good refresh rate. All right, let's get out on the road. sounds like at 72 miles per hour on the GPS. Good amount of road noise and exhaust noise. A little bit of wind noise as well, although I think there's kind of a strong crosswind today. Not exactly a refined highway cruiser. Middle of the road sound here. 
nothing's coming through too horribly sharp or harsh, but maybe it's a mixture of all the other sounds that the speakers have to fight against, but I'm also inclined to think not very great mixing contributes to a kind of a muddled sound. Certain hits are coming through harsh, nothing's really that crisp, but which is surprising with all these speakers, you think you could get a pretty crisp, powerful sound. It sounds dynamically bled. This next song, we'll turn the bass all the way up, see how that subwoofer handles it. my thoughts on the 2021 Rebel TRX's 19-speaker Harman Kardon audio system. Disappointing. Again, Stellantis shows us how you can toss a bunch of speakers into a cabin and come up with just about nothing. Some songs you're going to find sound really good. Very good spatial positioning, very crisp, good bass rumbles, and other songs you're going to turn on and you're going to be like, what? sounds awful. Mixing is poor, things are rattling, bass is flopping around. It's an inconsistent system and that makes for not a very good system. So sub objectively speaking for sound quality I'd be giving this about a six and a half. Objectively speaking for this being an off-road oriented truck we're fighting the sound of these tires and the engine and but then again, also bringing into the fact that this one costs ninety thousand dollars, I'm giving it about a seven. I think that's still being a little generous, just because I like this truck in general. But Ford's definitely blowing it away with its new B&O Unleashed system. This is about on par with the normal B&O system found in the mid-level F-150s. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more on the TRX, check the links in the description. We got all sorts of cool content. 
and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.